Welcome everybody, I'm Laura Shu. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the new radial filter tool here in the develop module. It's one more tool that we have for making local adjustments in our photos. Now in this particular photo, what I'd like to do is keep this broken wagon bright, but dark in the rest of the photo. Now I would often turn to the effects panel and use the vignetting sliders here to accomplish that. Now the problem with it in this case is that the wagon is not centered in the photo and there's no way to move the center point of the vignette using the effects panel. So I'm going to go ahead and double click on the amount there to reset that, close the effects panel, and we'll turn to the radial filter tool which allows us to create these off-center adjustments and also to make other adjustments besides brightening and darkening. For example, adding saturation or clarity or blurring. Now the radial filter tool, just like the adjustment brush and graduated filter tools, allows you to make all of these local changes to your photos. Now to draw this filter for the wagon, I would be tempted to click and drag at one edge of the wagon down to the other edge. But what I want to do instead is click and drag in the center of where I want the filter to be placed. Now notice that I can make it very tall, very wide, or more circular. So I'm going to click and drag and let go. And nothing has happened because I've said where, but I haven't yet said what. Now I'm going to go ahead and reduce the exposure and you'll see that the filter by default works outside of where you drag. So this area is not affected. The outside is getting the negative exposure and then it's fading or feathered along the edge here. I'm going to make this very dramatic so we can see better what's going on here. Now we have a feather slider down here to specify how harsh or how soft we want this edge to be. Now once we've drawn the filter, we can adjust its shape and its placement. So I can click and drag here to make it taller or just make it larger. I can also click on the pin itself to move it elsewhere in the photo. Let me go ahead and go back to something more subtle in terms of darkening. Now just like with the graduated filter and adjustment brush, we have this little switch here at the bottom that we can turn on and off so that we can appreciate the change that we've made in the photo. I would probably still go even a little more subtle. Now I can also have multiple effects. Maybe I want to darken the edges just like I've done with negative exposure, but I also want that outside area to be blurred. That would be using the sharpness slider and sliding it to the left. Between negative 50 and negative 100, in fact, is blurring. So I'm blurring the background now. Now if in fact, I don't want to affect the outside area, but I want to affect the inside area. I could click on the invert mask checkbox here. I'm blurring and darkening the inside of the filter now. I can also use the apostrophe key as a shortcut to invert the mask. I'm going to go ahead in this particular filter. It's still active. I still have the black pin. So I'm going to reset sharpness so that I'm just darkening the background. Now let's just say for the sake of example that I want a second filter on this photo. I would simply go elsewhere in the photo, or if this filter is in the way, I would simply click on New here, and then I can click and drag to draw a second filter. Now if you've drawn a filter that you don't want, click on it to make it active, and then hit the Delete key. Now notice that this pin is gray, this pin is black. Black means active. If it was this one I wanted to delete, I would click on it to make it active, and I'd hit the delete key, and it would go away. I'm going to do Ctrl or Command Z to undo that though, because it's really this one up here that I don't want. Now I want to show you a neat little trick that we now have here in Lightroom 5, and that's the ability to duplicate our adjustment. This works in the graduated filter and adjustment brush as well, and I'm very happy about it. So I have drawn this filter here, and I've affected the outside. Let's say I want a second filter on top of this. Maybe I want to double the effect on the outside. So I'm going to go back actually to blurring the outside here, but let's say I want to double the amount. Well, I can't do more than negative 100 in sharpness, but I can duplicate this filter. The secret is to hold the controller command key down and the alt to the option key and drag on the pin, and you'll see that I'm dragging out 
a second adjustment of the same size and shape and with the same sliders. In fact, I can put this new adjustment right on top of the old one. And now I've got double the blurring and darkening effect happening around the edges. I'm going to go ahead and hit delete now so that we just have this underlying one. And let's say that I want another filter of this exact same shape and placement. But this time what I want to do is on the inner area here, I want to add some contrast and clarity. I'm going to hold Ctrl or Command Alt or Option, click and drag on this pin here to put another one right on top of it. But now I'll reset exposure on this top one and I'll reset sharpness. I'll invert the mask so I'm affecting the inside now. And you'll see if you look at the wagon as I add contrast and clarity that I'm in fact affecting the inside now. If I want to get back to the pin underneath to adjust that one, for example, to make the outside darker, what I need to do is temporarily move this top one out of the way, click on the bottom one, and then I can further adjust that one. Then I would simply put this other one back on top of it. Now notice that as I move my mouse out of the picture, I'm not seeing my pins and my circles. I like it that way so that I can evaluate the photo better. That's because under Show Edit Pins here, I've set this to Auto. I could set it to Always, and no matter where my mouse is, I would see those handles. I'm going to go ahead and go back to Auto. Okay, I want to show you just one more tip. If I want a radial filter that goes all the way to the edges in my photo, I can hold down the Controller Command key and double click in the photo. And then of course I'd come over and apply whatever sliders I want to apply. If I want to get rid of all of my radial filters on a photo, I can simply click on this reset button. Finally, when I'm done with my radial filters, I'll go ahead and click back on the icon here to close the tool. So that's the radial filter here in the develop module. I expect to use it a lot. As I've said in other videos, I love the adjustment brush, which allows me to paint where I want to affect to make local changes. But if there are other tools that allow me to make local changes effectively without having to paint, I'm going to choose them every time. And the radial filter is now one of these. I'm Laura Shu. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Check out my other Lightroom 5 beta videos at laurashu.com.